Hello and welcome to the Best Kept Secrets podcast where my guests and I share our best kept secrets about an array of topics. Today I am doing a solo episode because it's my first episode so I thought that yani I just want to talk to to you it's just going to be me and you today and we're going to be talking about a topic that I know a lot of you are you know interested in hearing about because a lot of us are in those spaces and we're going to be talking about dating but specifically um towards a certain line which is the trauma bond side of dating that i think many people are in trauma bonded relationships but they are not aware they know their their relationship they're in is toxic but they are not aware what exactly it is and i thought it would be great to shed some light um on that aspect considering that i myself just came out of a very toxic relationship not so long ago um i don't want to share timelines or anything but here we go let me give you the tea um so basically i was in this relationship um it started off a couple of years ago and i could tell from the beginning that I shouldn't be in this relationship. I remember having a very I have a very vivid memory of when I just started talking to this person and um I really like prayed about it and I was like okay god do you want me to be with this person? Is this person good for me? I I I really really prayed about it and because I really liked him so much um I convinced myself that God had said that yeah this is the person that you're going to marry so go ahead and date them and that guys <laughs> it was a lie it was not god i i think looking back it was me and it was just you know when you want something so bad you believe it to be true um so i remember having a vivid memory of this time i'm living in my parents house so my parents live somewhere uko mbali uko ndani so i had to take a, I've, i've i would take border borders a lot so i'm on this border ride and i'm just thinking about this relationship and this situation with this person this is when it's just started and my gut was just telling me no sharon like i could hear like maybe even like a tangible voice telling me and like a deep inner feeling in my gut telling me no don't do that don't date this person and i'm just like brushing it aside and i'm just like no but i like him but i like him i want to date him and it was just yeah it was yeah of course i ended up because i'm rebellious i ended up dating this person and the relationship started off very intensely um i think in the first maybe week or two weeks he had already told me he loves me and i remember even telling him no you don't and he was like yeah i do and i'm like no you don't and i th- i just found that really strange and i'm like i mean i know we've been like homies for a bit because we were friends before we dated i was like okay maybe just because we've had the basic the, the baseline of friendship then that's why he loves me but i just remember feeling off about it and then it was just like you know him claiming me like very early on i think like in the first week or like the first two weeks after we had decided that okay um to get a bit more serious he was like yeah i love you your 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 my baby or whatever and i think in that moment that's what i wanted to hear i think just after having so many failed relationships that's exactly what i wanted to hear and i don't know if he knew that but he was that's what i needed to hear in that moment i needed someone to hear this man that i'm attracted to and that i like telling me that he loves me he wants to be with me and that i'm his baby he's claiming me and all of these things right so that relationship continued for a period of maybe 4 years and it was just i could somehow tell that it had started becoming some sort of cycle where it was very like deep and intense and very emotional to then now him withdrawing then he's like called all of a sudden he's not calling me he's not texting me he doesn't want to see me he's not interested anymore so there were a lot of like highs and lows um and i was very confused but then it became the norm it became then like that's just how our relationship was 
Um, and then by the time I'm moving out to my parents' house and I'm living alone, um, now that's when like the relationship got really intense because now he has a lot more access to me and my space and my house and all of these things. So we're literally like seeing each other every day and all of these things. But I remember like being so unhappy and so unsettled so like a big majority of the time but then I'm like but I love this person but like he's my best friend but you know and I remember calling my friend so many times crying because of things he had said things he had done things I had found out um and I would always make excuses for him and you know I think at some point my friends even got like tired of me to some like I think they've never said that to me but I think they just got tired of me constantly like calling them and crying I know you have that car one friend Ama you're the friend who's constantly calling the other friends to just be like imagine he's done this and this and this and then they tell you okay girl you gotta leave him and then two days later you're back and you can't tell them that you're back because of course I'm gonna be upset with you because you've you've cried so much to them about this person um and then i started remembering how when i was in uni i had a friend who was in a physically abusive relationship where this man would literally like beat her to a pulp and she would come to us and of course we'd you know give her solace and we'd comfort her and all of these things we'd even cry with her and tell her okay you know you need to leave him you can't accept this anymore and then she would go back um, like we just like be walking in school and then we bump into them like holding hands after he literally like bet like chapad her better <laughs> chapad her like two three days ago right and I remember I used to be so angry at her and I'm like why can't you just leave him just leave him like I in fact I got to a point where I started getting irritated by her because I'm like I'm tired of you coming to cry to me in my house about this man and then two days later you're back with him and when I got into that situation although mine was not a physically abusive um, situation I wished that I was a bit more patient and kind with her because I finally understood how difficult it is to leave such a relationship so when this time that we are in where I've now moved out I'm doing my master's so my master's is in psychology so we're learning about trauma bonds in school right and as the lecturer is talking about it, I'm like, this is sounding a lot like my relationship. And he even says, you know, a lot of you are in a trauma bond relationship and you don't know. And I'm like, oh my God, like, are you speaking to me? Because this sounds like my relationship. And basically a trauma bond relationship, a lot of people think that it's when you have your trauma and I have my trauma and then we bonded off of our trauma. But that's not what a trauma bonded, a trauma bond relationship is. A trauma bond relationship is where... Um, the victim um, kind of becomes bonded to their abuser. So f another name for it is a Stockholm syndrome where basically um, there were, I think, I don't know if it's a true story, but where there were like a bunch of people who had been kidnapped and then they were with these kidnappers for so long that they started becoming fond of them and they would even start making um, excuses for them um, and they, they developed the Stockholm syndrome where you make excuses for your abuser you make you know this person has literally kidnapped you but when you're being saved you're saying I but Simbaya if you're sana like I mean he fed us at least I know he kidnapped us but a little perchakula you know what I mean so that's a trauma bond relationship and then it exists of a lot of highs high highs and lows lows where basically there's abuse and then there's remorse for example you're in a situation where this person clearly abuses you whether physically emotionally or any sort of abuse or sexually even but then they are remorseful about it later where maybe they they physically abuse you and then they buy you like a very large extravagant gift that they know you've been wanting so that shows their remorse to be like i'm sorry i hit you here is a gift you know what i mean so with my situation he was very um you know we'd go through like the manipulation the gaslighting the lying the all of that and then there would be there would be now periods of him being very remorseful him being very you know babe i'm so sorry i'm gonna do better i'm doing it because of this and this 
this and this this is you know i even started feeling bad for him i started empathizing with him i started to be like okay i i mean he's like that because of this and i would constantly make excuses for him with my friends and that's how you know you're in a trauma bonded relationship one of the other ways you can know other than the abuse remorse high and lows is that you're constantly making excuses for them with your friends with your family with all of these things um even to yourself you even start to tell yourself i mean i know i'm not happy but at least he does this you know what i mean so that's another way you can know you're in a trauma bonded relationship eventually i did end up leaving the situation but with all trauma bonds you can't you just don't leave you it's not like a normal breakup at you wake up today and you decide yeah, i'm going to leave this person and then you leave usually most of the times it's a lot of like back and forth it's a lot it's a lot of leaving then going back um and every time you try to leave the person will probably do something to win your affection back and then you end up going back so I did do that a lot of times. I think we broke up. I can't even count the number of times we broke up you guys, but we broke up so so many times. I think you know I would leave him every week. Every week we'd break up. Um like I would meet my friend on a Monday and I've let I've left him he's blocked and then I meet her on Saturday he's unblocked and we're back together. And my friends were just like, "Sharon, he was blocked a few days ago." And I'm like, "Yeah, he's unblocked now. W- what you going to do about it?" Um So it got so bad that at some point this is now um pre-covid just before covid I started getting like sick and I went to the hospital I did so many tests and they couldn't tell exactly what was wrong with me but I knew I was in pain and I knew that my body was not 100% and then finally they decided to like t- do some tests and the doctor um asks me he's like are you stressed Sharon and i'm like what do you mean he's like is like school stressing you is like work stressing you are you stressed and i'm like why like i mean yeah i mean i'm as stressed as anyone else could be and he's like well um you have ulcers and we can tell that they are most probably like stress induced ulcers because i usually don't have any issues with food um so it's not like they were ulcers developed off of like eating anything that i shouldn't have eaten it was stress induced ulcers and he was like well your acidity levels are not great and if you continue like this they will start bleeding at some point and you're going to be in way more pain than you're in now because where it had gotten is that i was like i had um what's that thing called something reflex like where you vomit a lot like you can't keep food down you're always vomiting because you have a lot of acid so basically this relationship gave me ulcers and i was like oh damn like okay so i guess like this is my 100th cue to leave this relationship so i went home i got medicine and then the worst thing is that the medicine they gave me didn't even made my symptoms worse so i had to go back to, for like a fresh batch of medicine it was just a lot it was a lot um so i call him and i tell him all these things and i tell him yeah this is what happened at the hospital they said this and this and this and then he was like okay i'm going to come see you i'm so sorry etc and then later on at like night time he still hasn't come to see me so i i text him i'm like are you still coming or like what's up what's happening and he's like you know sharon like i also have a tummy ache i'm not feeling so well so i can't come see you and i'm like this man actually does not care whether i am dead or alive if i am bleeding on the inside or if i've been shot like he would like he doesn't care so why am i like literally like on the verge of death because of him okay i wasn't on the verge of death but you know what i mean right and i think that's when i started coming to the realization that okay maybe this thing is a bit more like deeper more deeply rooted than i i am um, i'm assuming that it is um and then eventually i did leave not that that time imagine even after that time i didn't leave eventually i did leave but it was because of other reasons i think what i learned um in that moment is that 
you know what it's not just him that's the problem i am also part of the problem because this man has been consistently treating me badly with little small moments of yes we are we are so bonded we are besties you're my best friend i love you so much and you know small moments of this and that here and i was clinging on to those ones so why am i allowing myself to remain in this situation why am i allowing myself to be with this man who treats me the way he treats me right um so i think after that i ended up going to therapy and i shared this story with my therapist and like after a lot of sessions she was like you know what Sharon i think you were in this situation with this person because they remind you of your childhood attachment um style not really attachment style but the way you were attached to your care you to your caregiver is how it's showing up in this person so the reason that i was in this situation is because i have deep rooted attachment issues and they were showing up even in this situation with this person so my caregiver when gro- when i was growing up was very hot and cold she was very inconsistent with me so the inconsistency with my ex was something very familiar to me chaos was familiar to me this was this was my definition of love i'm like yeah love is sometimes it sucks sometimes it's great sometimes they treat you badly sometimes they they treat you well you know they are human beings that that was my definition of love because with my caregiver that's how she showed me love that's how we related um and i realized one of the ways that i really used to act with him when i was in that relationship was the same exact way i was acting as a child so um he was in a whole other situation by the way when i was with him and so what i did is that i took it upon myself um in the beginning i wasn't aware or rather i was being lied to about this other situation but when he came clean and told me that yeah i'm in this other situation as well as this situation with you what i did is that i took up a performer role and i started performing and doing things to just make him choose me and not the other person and i realized it's because when i was a child the only time i was shown love is when i would perform was when i would do things when i was do do great things at school if i'd achieve something if there was a milestone i would hit that's when i was shown love so my definition was love of love was performing so i became a performer basically like i was the the one leading the circus i was the monkey i was the everything i was performing for literally everyone right so i i just realized that okay i'm literally like reenacting my childhood and it's not healthy especially in my adulthood because now i'm an adult and now i have the choice to not do this anymore but i am continuing it right So I think those are like the biggest things that I learned out of that situation. So I think I would I would urge you to ask yourself what is your definition of love? How are you repeating the same things you have repeated ever since you were a child? Is your definition of love even healthy? Is your definition of love chaos is it performing um is it abuse you know like a lot of people a lot of us think that we're in love but literally we're just like being abused a lot of us relate um relate love with abuse and i think especially like sad to say especially our grandmas and our moms have been abused so much that it's become a normal thing for them and they're like yeah unajua marriage ni kuchapa sa zingine you know sometimes he cheats you just have to forgive him sometimes he does this ako na familia ingine lakini ni sawa you just forgive him you know what i mean and this this same ideologies have been passed on down towards us um and then we've kind of like accepted them and made them our own so what are your de- what's your definition of love what does love look like look like for you is this how you want to be treated um And recently I read a quote that said would you allow your daughter to be treated the same way that you're being treated in your relationship on your marriage and I was just like bro if I had a daughter and she came and told me mom this man not only is he cheating on me lying to me gaslighting me manipulating me on top of that now I have ulcers because of him I'd be like girl if I'd slap you 
and like you know i'll just be like you you need to leave right and you know even the conversations i had with my mom and she was like sharon like i don't think this is good for you um and honestly i owe her so much for just you know calling me out and not being like so many other older women who are like it's okay msamehe too or you know it's fine he'll change whatever he, she was just like no you have to leave him um and she pushed i remember oh god i remember there's a time i called my mom crying so badly like like so like you know that like cry that comes from like the deepest part of your soul and i was just like mom it hurt so bad it hurt so bad and she was just like i'm so sorry you just you know you just like need to leave um gosh not me getting emotional yeah as she was just like yeah you need to leave um anyways so all this to say um one if you're in a situation where you feel like okay this is definitely a trauma bonded relationship or a toxic relationship one um i want you to know that you're capable of leaving this situation i know right now it looks very difficult i know it looks like you are you can't you're not capable of leaving i know it looks like I ju- what am I going to do without this man or without this woman? How am I going to pick up my life? Maybe you have children. I want you to know that you're capable of living. I want you to know that you are worthy of a healthy love. I want you to know that just because you've received um unhealthy love all of your life doesn't mean that you're not capable or worthy of healthy love right now even though it seems very far fetched. And number two, um let's not just you know i just don't want to tell you all these fairy tale things and not equip you with ways that you can live number one i would highly suggest no contact no contact is great when you are in a toxic relationship because it means that person has no access to you whatsoever you don't see them you don't talk to them yani no contact at all like they should not be even be you should not they should not be able to access you in any way because with such people you give them a tiny little door and they open the door a tiny little crack in the door and they open the door wide open and they're back right so no contact is a great way um if you have let's say a child with this person and then you have to communicate um there's another there's another technique that you can use where i've forgotten the name it's not stone walling but it's i know stone walling is not necessarily healthy but basically where you can have conversations with this person but you're basically like a stone like you're like yeah me i'm here to talk about my child and that's it where you're not let you're not giving them that tiny little like space that they need to be able to enter and just like cause chaos in your life all over again so that i would say that's a second thing number three i would say honestly prayer bro me i've when i tell you i've been praying i've been crying to god about this one situation for years and years and years and just having like people praying with you people holding you accountable people you know people who i know um as friends that it can get very tiring but you if if you're a friend of someone in this situation i would say please be patient with them please be you know hold them accountable but just be kind with them because this is a very difficult th- thing for them to do so surround yourself with people who will not only hold you accountable but also people who can pray for you people who can cover you in prayer because in most times um these trauma bonds are cycles that you need to break and the best person to help you break a cycle is god and a cycle is you know it could be a cycle of addiction because you know these highs and lows create some sort of addiction um addiction pattern in your brain just because of how your brain works it creates that high low high low thing creates some sort of like you know your chemicals just your hormones just being up and down all the time so if there's one person that ca- can help you break this pattern and this cycle it would be god so i would say definitely definitely include him in that process um and then even with which i would say number 4 is the friendship thing and having people holding you accountable you have to be honest with your friends you can't lie to them anymore you can't make excuses for this person with them anymore you have to allow them in and allow them to actually like hold you accountable and walk with you through this journey because it's going to get hard it's going to get to a point where you're like okay 
maybe I should just go back. Maybe he wasn't so bad after all. And, you know, maybe you'll miss the love bombing, um, the love bombing phase of the trauma bond where things were good and he did do good things and he did like, he was remorseful. He did do certain things that made you happy. You'll miss the happy chemicals, basically. Um, so you just, you know, you have to have people to be like, no, you can't do that. It's not going to end well. That's only going to be a very small part of it. And then lastly, I would say you have to just believe you have to be realistic about who the person actually is and you have to stop romanticizing them in your head. Um, you have to stop building fairy tales. Um, you have to stop thinking that this person is going to change or this relationship is going to get better. If it's been four years and it's the same, it's not going to change. I'm sorry to break it to you. It's probably not. If he's like been abusive to you for like 10 years, probably not going to change. Um, so you have to start seeing them for who they actually are and stop romanticizing them and making them a person that they are not. Stop holding on to the tiny little moments of happiness um, or the tiny little moments of, of little things that they did because the abuse is usually way more than those tiny little moments. So start believing start believing them for who they are and start stop romanticizing them and believe who they are. I think that's actually what has helped me the most because I did get moments where I had the urge to like text him or call him and block him and reach out. So I had to keep telling myself, Sharon, this person is like this and this and this. And you know, even when I think about him, I don't even think about him as, oh, he's such a horrible person. He's so this and he's so that because I think that limits you when you're trying to like forgive them and release this pain. So I see him as, you know, just a very like deeply wounded person that was projecting his pain and his wounds on me. And I happen to be a victim of that. So I don't look at him as a bad person whatsoever. I have not, I have been very, very um, cautious of villainizing him and victimizing myself just so I'm able to release this thing and to be able to just forgive him and move on because you know forgiveness should even be at a point where you're even praying for him you wish him well and or you wish her well and you're just like yeah I wish you well from a distance but like get thee behind me satan kind of thing so um, I think that's the fourth thing that I would say that say with that so as we wrap up um what my guest and i will be doing is sharing our best kept secrets about this certain topic that we spoke about so my best kept secret about this topic is that um there's a verse in the bible that says guard your heart because everything flows from it and i think i stumbled up across that verse a very long time ago i think when i was in the midst of the chaos and trying to leave and i was just like you know what i mean god is literally telling me to guard my heart because everything flows from it and you and i both know that when you're in a toxic relationship or a relationship that is very unhealthy then it affects all other parts of your life you know what i mean like you you're probably not doing well in school you're probably not doing well at work your health is not the best you know like especially your health it shows up in your body like stress um like stress in your mind sh shows up in your body as well like you have somatic symptoms as well so it's just you know i was like because everything flows from my heart i have to guard it and right now this is not me guarding it and right now it makes sense that i'm not doing as well as I should be doing in life because of this thing that is literally weighing me down and weighing my soul down. So that verse has kept me and has guided me for a really long time. And I'm happy to say, happy to report that a lot of the times I am guarding my heart um, and I am trying to be very um, cognizant of the fact that everything that I do flows from it. So that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next episodes. We have a great season lined up for you. Um, a lot of interesting conversations, a lot of interesting guests. And um, I hope you join me in this journey. Thank you for watching and listening for those who are listening and not watching. Bye.